Thank you guys so much for clicking on the video. My name is Jean, spelled like Jean, and in this video, I want to talk about one thing. One thing I'm thinking about, and that is, can you really, like really, can you fake it until you make it? 6.35, I'm super late for class. Oh, I didn't miss the warm up, dang it. Oh. I blew up for that. Holy crap. How do I look right oh, now? Great. <laughs> I always think Tabata is not going to hurt. But it hurts really bad. <laughs> All right, so as you guys saw, today was four Tabatas with a minute rest in between. Tabatas always get you, man. You always think, oh, that doesn't seem that bad. Oh, these movies don't seem that bad. And then you do it, and you're just like, ooh, yeah, that's bad. That hurts. That's, that's literally my, my time with Tabatas every single time I do it. But it was good. Good sweat. Typically, I take Thursdays off. Um, but Sam was sick earlier this week. She wasn't able to work out in the beginning, so she wanted to be able to work out today to kind of make up for it. And I was like, ah, I'll join you. I'll go to the gym. So it's kind of like an active day, active moving. I'm always really weary when it comes to multiple deadlifts, even at a lightweight, especially at a lightweight, because I really hurt my back once a few years ago before CrossFit doing light deadlifts. I just, you don't, you don't respect it as much when it's a lighter weight. And that's when you fall into having bad form and then kind of pinching your back and that's what happened. So I was very careful, very cautious during that time. But it was a good workout. Got a good sweat in, I feel good. Starting my day, it's only seven right now, so I'm happy, I'm happy. All right, so I was just working at Starbucks for a couple hours and I got some good work done, but Starbucks Wi-Fi speeds, sometimes. Sometimes they're good and sometimes they are Literally just like blood pouring out of my eyes waiting for it to upload so uh, I had to leave because uh, It is super slow, but I'm gonna be going to my church right now because their Wi-Fi is Blazing fast like surprisingly like really fast and so I'm just gonna show up. They're gonna be like what are you doing here? I'm like I'm gonna be using the Wi-Fi. They're like, okay, that's what we're gonna do making it happen hashtag nomad life Proof I was here, proof I was at the church, proof I did some work, but I'm just not gonna film myself there. Cause it feels super vain to film myself at a church. A couple weeks ago, I was on a drive to Anaheim, which is about an hour and a half, and so I was listening to the Lewis Howes School of Greatness podcast, and they had a guy on named James Clear. Now, James Clear just wrote a book called Atomic Habits, and in this podcast, he talks about the need to develop identity habits. Is that what he called them? I got, I got, a, I got a clip. I'll show you what I hear. In the book, I talk about this concept I call identity-based habits. And essentially, what you're, the ultimate form of immediate gratification is the reinforcement of your desired identity. So you go to the gym and you're reinforcing the identity of I'm the type of person who doesn't miss workouts. Or you show up to write and you're reinforcing the identity of I'm someone who writes every day. And so you get a little bit of immediate satisfaction for being that person and being aligned with your identity, your values, your principles. Um, but you also get the long-term rewards from showing up every day. Like sometimes people will say stuff like, fake it till you make it. But fake it till you make it is asking yourself to believe something without evidence for it. And you can do that for a little while, you could do it for a day or a week, but eventually, I mean, there's a word for beliefs that don't have evidence behind them, it's delusion, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're deluding yourself, then eventually you give up on that. But the power of doing a better habit each day or casting a little vote for that type of person is that now you have evidence to root your belief in. Yeah, and so now I've done it for six up, months, yeah. Right? Like, I mean, now you have a lot of evidence that you're a podcaster or right. a good interviewer, you know? Like, you do this over and over again, each time you cast a vote for believing that about yourself, and you don't just, you aren't delusionally believing that you're a good interviewer, it's because you've shown up and done it hundreds of times. Right. The concept that he's going against is faking it till you're making it. And, 
<laughs> fake it till you make it. Now, the reason he's against this is because in the very nature of the word and the phrase, fake it till you make it, you're already telling yourself that you are not that person, right? I'm just faking it. I'm faking being a YouTuber. I'm faking being a video editor. I'm faking having these skills, photography, videography, editing, whatever it is, going to the gym, going to church, whatever. There's like this like mentality of I'm faking it until people accept me. And the problem with that is that it's totally dependent upon other people people's acceptance and view of you and there's not really anything you can do about that except for keep on faking it. Instead, in reality, what you should be doing is every time you go to the gym, you say, I'm the kind of person who goes to the gym. I'm the kind of person who works out. I'm the kind of person who puts health first. Every single time that you go to edit a video, go on a photo shoot, go on a whatever job interview, you think, I'm the kind of person who plans ahead. I'm the kind of person who gets this job. The way that you prove that you are that kind of person is that you have all these task. You have all these habits that you've already established, whether it's cleaning your bed, whether it's cleaning your house, whether it's going to church, whether it's whatever, you've established that you are this type of person because you have the evidence of what you've done. And so it's less fake it till you make it. And it's more, I made it because I've done it. Right. And, and it's a confidence in yourself that you're able to say that I know that I can do this because I've done this multiple times and not, I sure hope people learn to accept me. And it takes the power off the other person. It takes the power of them defining who you are. If you make it, if you don't make it, if you're worth anything or not off them and puts it on you. And that is a much better place to be because you get to decide. We have self-awareness. We're able to look at something. We're able to look at life and say, I don't like that and we can change it. A lot of people don't like the pressure. A lot of people don't like the fact that it's up to them, but it is so freeing because you are capable. The very fact that you're unhappy where you are, if that's what it is, the very fact that you want change, if you do, is because you are self-aware enough to know that something's not right and you want to improve that. You want to make that better. And it's not faking it, it's proving it to yourself, right? I am finally reading the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I've heard so much about it and I know it's like on so many people's must read list. I'm finally getting around to it and I'm excited. I'm going to bring back books and barbells where we talk about the book and do some workouts. It'll be really cool. But in seven habits of highly effective people, Stephen Covey says this, if you don't let a teacher know what level you are by asking a question or revealing your ignorance, you will not learn or grow. You cannot pretend for long. You will eventually be found out. Admission of ignorance is often the first step in our education. This is kind of along the same lines that if you just like faking it till you're making it puts you on this level that maybe you're not at. And I think there is a certain level of how, like you want to attain to get better. You want to attain to learn more and to be on the next level, but you don't want to pretend you're here when you're here. I think you should be here attaining for here, but don't pretend you're on that next level when you're not already there. Because then you're afraid to ask the simple questions. Then you're afraid to ask the obvious things to everyone else, but that you've just been faking it. You don't know and you can't learn. You'll never have that opportunity to learn until you ask that question, until you just say like, yeah, I don't know, I need to figure this out. So there's another evidence to me that you just, you can't fake it till you make it. Like that doesn't work. What does work is setting up habits in your life that prove that you are the type of person that you want to be and by asking questions, recognizing where you are, having that self-awareness, and then attaining to rise through knowledge, through learning, through experience. If you feel like you need to fake it to make it, I wanna challenge you. Is it because you're trying to put off that you're better off, better than you actually are? Is Are you trying to put off this impression to your friends, to your coworkers, to your colleagues, people on the same level as you? Or are you really confident in who you are? Because I don't think if, some, if someone's confident, if they're confident that they can learn the skills necessary to change, that they can learn the habits necessary to get them to where they want to be, then you don't need to fake it. You can do this. Like, you can do this. I don't know. That's what's been going on in my mind. I hope it makes sense to you. I hope it fits all in this well, but let me know what you guys think. Do you guys agree with me? Do you agree with fake it till you make it? Like, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. We'll engage. We'll have a conversation. It'll be so much fun.